Hello folks, I've got this uh, new Dytron D80, well I suppose it's been out a little while, uh, uh, display DRO. And I'm not gonna, oops, there we go. I'm not gonna go into a video of how to use it. There's, there's already a couple of them online here. But what I am going to do is this right here. I've got the fast to buy one micron scales, glass scales. And um, apparently I didn't know this, that uh, the DB9 connectors can be set up differently for different displays. And I had talked to uh, Reeson who also sells the D80 and uh, they told me, oh yeah, those scales will work and blah, blah, blah. And um, because I've got these, I've got these JCS 900s, I've got the two axis and three axis. They work great. They're, they're fine displays, the Jinxies. And I've been happy with them. Um, but I wanted some more features, uh, including RPM, so I went ahead and got the RPM, and boy, I tell you, it works pretty cool. And it's even got settings, so if you use the gearbox, um, you at least have two uh, offsets you can use. It doesn't have it for all of, all of them, but I only use two of the two of them anyways. Most of the time, I'm just one-to-one, -one, but... Um, so it has the settings for the RPM, and then it uses... Uh, I just drilled a little... Or there you go a small little hole right there and super glued the magnet in there and uh, so this sensor here will have a bracket hanging off the back side it'll be all tidied up anyway so take a look at these pins the layout here and what you're gonna find here is here's a good screenshot this is the d80 ditron pinout got it this here is the Jingxi pinout. See how they're different? The pins are different. Most of them move, so your standard Asian scales, in which you know you buy these kits off of eBay, uh, will move the pins from the top to the bottom. So you can see the red power will move to pin number seven. The white, um, let's see. The uh, white here came out of pin number three and went to pin number, pin number here, I'll just show you here now. I've, got a, I've gone through it and I've forgotten to write it down here. What you want to do is your color code, you're going to leave the black wire right at the top that's gonna stay in pin number two. So when you're looking at these, your top row from left to right is one, two, three, four, five, and then bottom row six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, my hands are all dirty. I machine all day long. So you want to leave the black one alone. You can see where I pressed out the other three. This uh, number five is not used. So um, the pins I didn't didn't need. I just pulled them out. Why have them in there? It does, you know, you're screwed in anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I, I didn't want them in there. So you can see the white wire goes down to pin number six. Red wire goes to pin number seven. And the green wire goes to pin number eight. So that's all you have to do. I'm not gonna complicate it any more than that. Or, um, if you want to know how to get the pins out, there's a special tool you can get. Otherwise, I just used uh, a simple tungsten. I used this tungsten that I had here. And um, just it worked really well just to push them out. And uh, it's just careful about pushing them back in. So that's it, folks. Uh, that way you're not having to go buy new scales. These are brand new scales, by the way. I, I bought them, I just didn't buy the uh, slim. I wanted to save a little money, so I went to fast to buy versus buying them from Dytron because they're what it cost me another $120 for the, just for the set of three. And that, uh, this is a four axis setup, so, and I have another, another scale coming. Um, 
So that would have been the cost of a whole nother scale. And I'm fine with glass scales. I've never had problems with water or anything like that. And uh, every now and then I do take them off and then just take a, uh, um, a Q-tip. Just go in there and at first I blast it out with air and then take a Q-tip and make sure that there's nothing on the glass anywhere. And I've never had any issues uh, uh, dressing them up and getting them fully functional again. It's super easy. So, And if you set them up properly, you know, and put the shields over them, uh, make sure, you know, your everything's set up so that the, the little uh, uh, slotting on it is facing away from where you're cutting. So, you know, such as this, you know, it's facing towards the back of the machine. Uh, and then I'll have a shield cover over that. So, you know, nothing's gonna bounce back and get back in there. It's, it's just the way to do it. Um, same kind of thing. You know, you've got your Y axis. So uh, it'll have a shield coming off of here and going over the side and then there'll be a bracket coming up, you know, and unless you were gonna fill that full of fluid, even then it still wouldn't probably submerge, but, uh, I don't do a lot of coolant cutting, and uh, like I said, I've never really had an issue with it on the lathe or anything else. When I do, it's just too messy, so I usually use air or oil, oil mess, so. There you go. Quick, I'll go over it again. If I don't drop it on the floor, I gotta love it. It's like two o'clock in the morning, I'm tired as hell. So black stays in the number two pin. Uh, your white, goes down to number six, your red goes to seven, and your green goes to eight. Doesn't get any easier than that. So if you want to use the D80 display, it'll work with all your Asian, just move your move your uh, pins down. If you need an actual pin out, uh, just uh, take it off the video, do a screenshot of it, of the sheets that I, that I uh, portrayed up there for you. So there you go, folks. I really hope that that helps you out.